And we are coming down in three, two, one. Welcome to Getting Sports with Drunk. I'm your host, Cupcake the Riddler, and I'm joined by... Mark. Sheen Washable. No. Yep. Brother Souls. Why are you doing the Trump fingers? <laughs> I think. <laughs> J-Mart. And the Red Baron. Yeah. Meow. What the hell was that? Switch it up. That sounded more like, like, a, like, a, like a weird animal noise. Yep. You're Meow. a weird animal now, Kendall. <laughs> Get the whole crew together for a part of the show. Yeah. Mark Sheen's leaving us. He's got to go do. Yeah, he's going to our rival show, getting sober with sports, <laughs> getting sober with, with board games. <laughs> with board games. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I show him how to connect for it's just. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we got the whole crew. We got J Mart fresh off the uh, fresh off the boat from Mexico. Yeah, he survived Honestly, Cancun. Yes. <laughs> it's Cancun. Why is everyone pronouncing it wrong today? I don't get it. It was like 80 degrees all week. Now we're here. And it's actually brilliant. nice here, too, but like I feel cold. Ah, you missed the shit week. Oh, nice. Nice. It was pouring. It's cold. Forever. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It rained so hard. <laughs> uh, I was like, I got to spend some quality hours at home. I stood outside and I, like, I can't tell you how warm those fryers are. <laughs> just, I was like, I just rest my balls. I saw a lot of your family there, Kyle. Oh, no, you didn't. Because I'm not Mexican. <laughs> iguanas. The iguanas. <laughs> oh, iguanas. You racist. <laughs> How are they doing? They're good. They don't really move around until you go near them. <laughs> yeah. They're just bad. Don't bother my friends. <laughs> You're kind of a scaly guy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I'm feeling your whole family's going You down. can't use Kyle, my you, <laughs> you might be Gilberto today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always brother souls. <laughs> Hermano souls. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can't add more nicknames. I could be, be Mojito. All right. That we'll take. We, it's funny. We were talking yesterday, Jeff. Um, Brother Mojito. We, we would like to make a sketch comedy show of Kyle and just all his different characters. That would be good. We'd like Stop. to lead off with Coach. Bunch of Kyles. We're going to do Coach. We're, the first one's going to be with Coach Annis, and he's going to be playing 18 holes of golf. Oh. <laughs> what course? Uh, Pebble Beach. Pebble Beach. Pebble Beach. <laughs> with his cousin. Oh God! Oh no! After that, Doctor Souls. Oh, we should do one with Coach getting his license. That would be <laughs> funny. What holds the? W- you know what? I don't want to know. <laughs> we'll get him a suicide knob so we can put it in his mouth. <laughs> oh, yikes! <laughs> Coach drives standard. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Starting lineups. Uh, brother Mojito. I got the greatest beer on earth. Push. Wow, that's some uh, extra oomph at the end there. <laughs> I have from here in uh, Connecticut a Sea Hag IPA. From? Hey. Nebco. You got to tell people where it's from. It's what from if... the New England Brewing Company in Woodbridge, Connecticut. That's better. I like that. What if someone was like, wow, that beer sounds really good? Mine from St. Louis, Email Missouri. us at Getting Sports with Drunk, and I'll let you know. Brewed this bad boy myself. <laughs> This is uh, our first <laughs> cider featured on the show. Actually, that's not true. Souls had a cider once, pretty sure. From yeah, when we did the, the in the, the basement show. Yeah, I basement day. That, that was gross. One or something. That was probably the worst we've ever had. It wasn't a beer, so. Ah, well, we'll be sure to get you some more for birthdays, Christmas, whatever. But I have the like Ice Man from Angry Orchard, and I couldn't tell you for the life of me where Angry <laughs> Orchard is. Now, Kenna, what's the only reason you bought that? Cincinnati, Ohio, is where they're from. I guess. Uh, I got the Iceman. This actually was a gift from the Riddler for my birthday. Uh, I got it because my ECSU radio persona was the Iceman. Iceman goes way before that. I was going to say, that you had that way, but that was your Xbox gamer tag. I'm just, you know, trying to draw a line. (laughs) Iceman, triple X mom. (laughs) Riddler, what do you got? Uh, Well, I'd just like to throw some shade towards uh, the Red Baron because they're not from Cincinnati, Ohio. Then why say it on the bottle? <laughs> They're from New York. <laughs> Bottled by Angry Orchard Cider Company, Limited Liability Company, Cincinnati, Ohio. They're from They're from New York. 
Hey, I'm just telling you we what it says. We want answers, Angry Orchard. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> if that's your real name. <laughs> oh, this contains sulfites. Yikes. <laughs> secondary location. Secondary location? Yeah. It's a front. <laughs> uh, Bath salts. <laughs> from, from Chico, California, but brewed in Mills Chico. River, North Carolina, I have the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Ooh. Everybody's first craft beer. <laughs> no. Everybody's first craft beer is Magic Hat. Mm. It's been around forever. It's true. It's the same Magic Hat that they brewed back in the 90s that you're drinking today. Well, Sierra Nevada's been around forever. You yeah, can see Magic- it in the background of many episodes of Friends. This is true. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> so I've got a Narragansett lager here. I'm sorry, what? Sorry, pardon me, a Natagasserit Thank you. from the Natagasserit Brewing Company. In Cincinnati, Ohio, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is Rochester, New York, which isn't really Natagasserit, but hey. I was say, isn't that in Rhode Island? <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> it's a hyphenated name, Rochester, New York, Rhode Island. <laughs> Toast of Excellence? Souls? Mine is to Shaw Manea from the Oakland Athletics for throwing a hitter against the Boston Red Sox. It's a golf clap, Mark. <laughs> Not <It's> today. <laughs> First time they got no hit in like 25 years. Yeah, yeah they had the second longest streak to the oh. A's. Had the first. Wow. Look at that. Red Baron. Uh-huh. I'm, my toast excellence is James Harrison calling it a career after 16 seasons. I He'll believe. be back. <laughs> I beat me to it. Still is when him again. He might. Um, I don't know if that's I read a this thing. Relationship. said there was no ill will with the Steelers, so, you know. I'll take that. You think he'll keep posting workout videos? Oh, absolutely. (laughs) He's already posted like 12. (laughs) I hope he gets like a gray beard going or something. (laughs) His long beard. Mm -hmm. Looks like the guy from Sanford and Sons. I'm hoping that the Steelers (laughs) lose a linebacker and they're like, James? And he goes, I don't like you. (laughs) (laughs) My uh, my toast goes to Anthony Davis. Boo. No, no, no. Drew Holiday. Nope. Davis, uh, game four. Well, they completed the sweep over Portland. He dropped 47 points. He's a good guy. MVP. You don't know that. I don't know that. He could sure. easily be a dickhead. I know. I know. Shame. I don't think he is. Shaved he his unibrow, didn't he? Is no, it was an April it's Fool's April joke. Fool's. Oh. He got you. Got me. I didn't watch the video. I just saw it somewhere. <laughs> so mine should go to Aaron Rodgers for becoming a minority owner of the Bucks, but it's going to go to Marquette King, who was at the game when it was announced to Rodgers. And tweeted, don't do it, Danica Patrick. You need a punter in your life. <laughs> in front of him. Shoot your shot. Atta boy, Marquette. <laughs> Good for him. Is he a Bucks fan? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know where he's from. Sometimes when you're a celebrity, you just go to stuff. <laughs> yeah. I would go to tons of Bucks games if I was just a semblance famous. <laughs> I guess. All right. <laughs> uh, my toast of excellence is to uh, Matt Fort and Devin Hester. Um for signing one-day contracts with the Chicago Bears tomorrow to retire as Bears. Very nice. Listen, everyone knows Forte was a better Jet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't say it without <laughs> laughing. <laughs> I'm going to get started on this. This is like a... It's going to twist it. It's a cork well, in here, too. Pop it. Pull it. Do, Crack do, 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 do. <laughs> No, I'm mad now. You're a dick. Yeah, that was a it dick was move. It was a joke. It was a dick move. Mox dick. Dick move. Last time I had one of these was after a bar crawl. He open, you even open it. You know, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna say something mean, like I hope, like you know, Shepard tears his ACL or something this I season. I hope you tear your ACL. Oh God, I'm scared of that every day. And you know how I hope you do it? Slipping on your own piss in the bathroom. Oh, I'm such a mess. Ouch. Especially if you're still peeing. Whoa! Look at that. Oh, it's everywhere. Oh boy. Uh oh, Peter! It's on the board. <laughs> oh, I don't even say that. It's my favorite. Uh oh. Uh. So yeah, so uh, Soul said that he had a show planned today. So what is it, Souls? Did not you said you had a show planned today? You can't rely on things that I say. I'm just the hostess cupcake. I'm not the Twinkie. Um. Oop, new nickname does that alert. Make Kyle the Twinkie. <laughs> I am cream. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't oh, know man. what I just heard, but I think I heard what I thought I heard. No, we'll just kind of do like some discussion stuff. I'll just throw out some like some some topics. Yeah. What do you got? And we'll just kind of do some. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Twinkie. <laughs> some discussion, cream uh, filling, just various things. Because I mean, so right now, like uh, last week, we talked about the the NBA playoffs and NHL playoffs kicking off, and yep. you know, the, the, 
the first round's not over. You know, if you haven't been watching, unless you're the Blazers, the Sharks and the, the Vegas teams. Knights for the NHL have performed sweeps, and uh, in the NBA, the Pelicans are the only team to advance thus far, right? Pels, so, pels, pels. Right? That's no right. other team. No other team has won the first round yet. So, so that's that's that. Yep. Yeah. All right. There we go. Moving on. Um, also, your friendly public service announcement. Don't forget to tune in this Thursday night. The NFL draft. Yeah. Yes, sir. Starts at eight. 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 I believe Souls will be live tweeting that night. I will. <laughs> live tweeting. And you can see firsthand the lives of two young gentlemen that will be ruined forever within the first hour of the NFL draft. Well, first hour and a half. The Bears might not pick to like nine thirty. I was talking about the Browns, the Browns. you fucking idiot. It could happen. <laughs> you so I, I think shit. this season Ryan, the Browns are the Browns are breaking that stereotype. Nope. Three wins. This season. There are certain teams that are just doomed forever. I can't help but notice the other side of the table is really taking shots at the Bears today. I didn't, I did not take a shot at the Bears. I made a joke. Kyle Souls took a shot at took the Bears. <laughs> <laughs> he took a shot. His teams are winning, so he's, he's on <laughs> something right now. At least, you know what? Never mind. Behave yourself, Paul. Just behave yourself. <laughs> we'll do it off the air so the listeners don't hear. I'm uh, telling you. All right. So we'll just, we'll just throw out. I found some like interesting discussion posts. I didn't save any of them like an ass, and I got to try to remember what they are. But uh, and just make them up. <laughs> all right, so we'll start with this one. Uh, so Mark Burley, okay, uh, career stat line: uh, two hundred and fourteen and one sixty, uh, three point eight one ERA, uh, north of eighteen hundred strikeouts, five time All Star, World Series champ, four time Gold Glover, and pitched a perfect game and a no hitter in his career. But his ERA of three point eight one is what's going to keep him from getting into the Hall of Fame. Agree or disagree? Souls? I don't think he gets in, regardless of what it was. I just feel like his numbers aren't Hall of Fame worthy. He had he had special moments in his career. I just don't think overall he put it all together to make it a Hall of Fame career. How many seasons did he play? Um, he played from 2000 to 2015. So, at least once every three years, he was an All Star. Right, you say he was a five time All Star, mm-hmm. and he had three Gold Gloves. Four, four. See that that to me is a hard position to win a Gold Glove, because there's more pitchers in the league yeah, than any other position. Way more competition. Ask Greg Maddox, right? Dude with nine. But that's what I'm saying. Like to win a Gold Glove as a pitcher, you're competing against what five at least five times more players in, of the same position. Um. I think Burley gets in, but it may take some time. He won't be, you know, maybe three, four yet. Because baseball is weird. They, like, make people wait forever. It's, But I, I think he'll get in. What was his ERA? Uh, three, eight, nine. I mean, that's not, like, glaring. It's, it's, it's not excellent, but it's not, like, some players average a five for their career. The other thing, I, I, I mean, I'm sure we don't have it in front of us, but was it lower and then maybe towards the end of yes. his career it went up? You know, as he was aging, I'm sure he was giving up and more it's hits. kind of how he changed his pitching style, yeah. too. Towards the end of his career, he wasn't a velocity guy, so he got hit around. So, I mean, I think it's a yes, too. I could see him getting in. So he stuck around for a while. To play 15 years, I mean, really of any professionals, that, that's, a, that's a long career. And even in his, like, last few seasons, he always compiled, like, if not close to a winning record, the numbers were usually always there. The other thing, a lot of people, when they go through the Hall of Fame thing, they, they say, like, the eye test. And and Kyle kind of said it. He's had, like, the memorable moments. Oh, yeah. You know, he had the perfect game, the no-hitter. He's won World Series. I, I think he'll have enough to get in at some point. And they may make him wait, but I think he gets in. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. What do you um, think, Paul? Hmm? What do you think? I think he gets in, but I just I, like I agree with you. I think it takes you know like five or six years or something like that, or you know I don't know the the, the gestation yeah, I, I period don't think he's is first ballot, but no, because I mean like, he wasn't. If you you know you go back in time from 2000, 2015, he wasn't by any means one of the top three dominant pitchers of that that era. But I mean, he was still good all the way up until the end of his career. Yeah. I mean, I went to a game in two thousand and fifteen 
when he played the White Sox, it was Sale versus Burley. I think the game lasted like five minutes, <laughs> and the final score was one nothing. Um, all right, so uh, this one's interesting. I mean, I, I feel like it's going to be nose across the board, but it'll be fun to ask anyway. Do you think there's any chance that Russell Westbrook averages a triple double for his career numbers throughout his career at any point? No, only because I feel like he's going to play as long as he's healthy and towards the end of your career. No, 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 no. no. He's not, I'm not saying he's going to finish with a. Oh, well, do you so think that's at any amazing. point his his he, he'll because he's a stat guy. The guy gets he gets a lot of rebounds. Yeah. He's very athletic, very involved. Boxes out his do you own think guys. It, do you think at any point in his career he can get his numbers up to, to triple-double capacity? Right now, for his career, he's averaging 23 points a game, 6.5 rebounds, 8.2 assists. I don't think he can catch the rebounds. Even if he averages 10-plus for the next few seasons, it's still going to be a little under the mark. We know this is all struggling high school students. It's a lot harder to get your grade up than it is to bring it down. Yes, <laughs> that is true. When you start with a 60, it's tough to bring that yeah. down. Yeah, when you have a 60 and you get 600, it only goes to 63, but you get 158 and it fucking goes to a 2. <laughs> I don't I mean that that is a really that would be very tough. I mean, you would have to average like 15 rebounds for a season in the next like 4 years. <laughs> I could see him trying to do it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, let's be realistic. If he stays put and Paul George goes to the Lakers and Carmelo goes somebody somewhere else, it's just him again. Yeah. Put him at the four. Put him at the four on defense. You know, back to his defense. Why isn't he a good defender? Well, he vows he's going to shut down Rubio. But it's it's not he can defend. He just like has lapses. He's not mentally there. Very interesting. Trust me, nuts. Yeah, he'll just you'll see him lose his guy and just stand there for another <laughs> minute. And it's like, what are you, what are you doing? Well, I think I think Westbrook's problem. I mean, I personally, I think he's explosive, but I don't think he's like 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 he can he can jump the gap real quick and and, and intercept the ball, you know, to bring it down court for yeah. a fast break, or he can slash, or, or he can like explode off of a screen to get back to his defender. But in terms of just like laterally keeping one on one with like Kyrie. Someone who's got like handles and, and quick oh, lateral toast. movements. I don't think Westbrook is like he's not that kind of guy. Like I don't think he can just laterally move that quick. So, you know, when you get a like I mean, I'm not calling Rubio a ball handler by any means, but when you get a somebody who does that kind of thing who like strategically runs the point versus tries to be the guy who scores a bunch of points, I feel like it can kind of expose Westbrook. He might also play defense lackadaisically to get in better rebounding position. Yeah, it's entirely possible. It's 100% entirely possible. He probably does. He'd probably get really mad and like hold a press conference if you heard us say that. He's going to come on the show. He's going to shut that shit down. He's going to fist fight all of us. He's going to wear like a he's going to wear a three-piece suit, but he's only going to wear the vest. <laughs> he's like a matador. He's going to wear the vest. <laughs> He'll wear the pants too. Maybe. So you might want to. You just described to me a matador. A matador. Um. All right. So that's that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Uh. This one. I, I'm more interested in hearing Souls' take on this one, but I want everybody's opinion. Uh. Is is Remember the Titans the greatest sports movie of all time? Oh man. No. Absolutely not. What is? All right. Do you remember the Air Bud conversation? The dog can play basketball. <laughs> Next person. <laughs> he can not play just football. Basketball. <laughs> Soccer, baseball. I mean, the guy's getting his masters in sports management. You roll, you rolling with that? <laughs> Airbud no, goes but, uh, to community college. <laughs> <laughs> no, Airbud is not. But it's it's pretty. It's up there. But it's not the best. Um, and I think remember the Titans is not the best either. See, I don't think it's the best sports movie because to me that was it, they played a sport, but it wasn't like a sports yeah, movie. It was more, yeah. You know, I mean, like it's they played like football, but movie. the oppression yeah, like, and it wasn't there to be a sports movie. The longest yard, sports movie. Is that your discussion <laughs> for the no. greatest sports movie? <laughs> 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 the Burt Reynolds version. <laughs> it is the best sports movie. Elaborate, Julius Campbell. All right. You can't just say character names. I can do that. <laughs> Air, Air Bud. Bud. <laughs> the clown from Air Bud. <laughs> the guy that gave him the yogurts. Pudding. 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 
We had this conversation last see, week. See, but like, do you think Remember the Titans is better than The Sandlot? Because I don't. Like, you movie have aspect? Been yeah. sir. <laughs> like, movie aspect? Oh. Yes. Wait, real quick. Rita, what, what movie are you talking about? Double Team. Double Team? Yeah. I, don't, I don't even, don't know, even that know what is. that is. Was that a Mary Kate and Ashley movie? No. Is it? Mine's The Green Monster. That soccer movie with the kids. The Big Green? The Big Green, that one, yeah. Uh, what about Goon? <laughs> yeah, that was Goon. good. <laughs> Slapshot? I think I think Sandlot has to be. Espe- given, especially, like, uh, we, we grew up playing baseball. We didn't grow up playing football. I mean, Remember the Titans is a great movie, but Sandlot was just, like, a bunch of kids playing the sport they loved. Baby Ruth? With whatever they could find and scrap together. Then that damn dog kept eating all their balls. Hey, so they got the inspiration, you know, to go they play never basketball quit. and other sports. That's not and then they ruined works. it with Sandlot, you know, too. It's, it's, <laughs> funny, it's funny. Um, I don't know if you guys saw. They just The cast for the movie just got together for like the yeah. 25th year reunion. <laughs> but Benny the Jet is in jail. <laughs> is he? So, yeah, so he wasn't there. <laughs> Some of those guys look terrible. Yeah, you know the little brother? Yeah. Yeah, you should see him. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm seeing Yaya fucking jacked. No Wendy Peppercorn, though. She wasn't there. I know. What the hell? Also in jail. <laughs> With Benny. <laughs> well, Benny was a firefighter. What happened? He got in trouble. It, it was a couple years ago. Fighting more than fires. <laughs> yeah, I think it was something like that. I think it may have been like a domestic thing or something like that. Arson. Yeah, him looks exactly <laughs> the same, just older. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he did look the same. <laughs> Poor bastard. What about radio? Do you guys ever see radio? Yeah. It's a good movie. Yeah. That's. I think that falls into the, the like, remember the Titans movie, though. Yeah. That's not really a football movie. Oh, it true. is, oh, but it's not, oh, about the, oh, it's well, not about the sport. The water boy. That's a football movie. <laughs> what about Rudy? Rudy? Kyle Fire. loves Rudy. Guy was offsides. <laughs> Mine, my, I don't know. I think my mine's Mystery Alaska. Everyone at the table goes silent because no one's ever seen that movie. Don't know what that is. It's a That's, hockey movie. Oh. I thought it was snow dogs. Just, <laughs> just no, that's, that's, one of those, that's the like, Cuba Gooding Jr. movie called Snow Dogs. Specials. No, Mystery Alaska is really good. It's, uh, this uh, it's a mystery it takes place in Mystery Alaska, and uh, there's this like amateur hockey team that plays like a uh, they play games like every Saturday on the pond, and like everybody in the town's like all about it. And um, it's like a comedy drama. It's fictional, but um, uh, the Rangers, the uh, bus breaks down. Like in Alaska, and like they end up playing the Rangers in a scrimmage game, and like everyone loses their shit. I think you told me about that. We've no, talked about it on the radio. Uh, <laughs> I think I've true. seen this movie. What about now, the my um, career dialogue. It's, it's a great story. <laughs> Would you put Freak? Miracle in there, Paul? Yeah, Miracle was a good movie. Yes. Yeah, it's weird. You know, for me, like I like sports movies that are based off true stories, but like I, I'm much more into stories that aren't real. Like for for. Like the longest yard, and like well, yeah, Happy you watch Gilmore. Miracle, you know how it's gonna end. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not just that, but it's just like you know, it's like I don't know, like, like the goon and and the rookie and rookie of the oh, year the and Quaid, baby. little <laughs> giants, like all, like I don't know, I just I like those sports movies, like they're just the. I changed my answer. It is the little giants. <laughs> I feel the dreams. Mm. That's a good movie. Girls can't play. That kid. The, did you guys see? Everyone here see Little Giants. Yeah. Spike. That was Rob Gronkowski as a kid, <laughs> like one hundred percent. Spike don't like girls, <laughs> and then he grows up. Gronk sleeps with anybody, <laughs> especially BB Jones. You ever see Icebox today? Sexy. <laughs> okay. Can we get that on the queue for you guys? I thought that was a movie you were talking yeah. about. <laughs> I thought he was talking about the cake. Yeah. <laughs> Some of that <laughs> shitty song he likes. Which one? Ice He goes, which one? Oh, that, that old Omarion yeah. song. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Kyle's going to start singing in three, two. I got to look up Icebox. So, uh, when we're gonna How long one? does it take to type in Icebox <laughs> is my question. Should... The should the NHL well, continue? Not a picture. Um, Hold on, <laughs> souls. Sorry. Yeah, we moved on, Kyle. Uh, should the NHL continue having games decide be decided by shootouts? Yes. yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> souls. I hurt. I think so wholeheartedly. Okay. I also stand by that. I missed a question. I sneezed. Should the NHL still continue to have games won by shootouts, won and lost by shootouts? Yes. Yes. 
It's, a lot just, of fun. it's too exciting to get rid of. It, it's one of the most exciting things in sports is watching a shootout. Okay, now the follow question is: Do you think they should adapt the shootout to the playoffs? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't. Right, because currently goalies. right now there's no shootouts in the playoffs. No, I never endless liked overtime, that. sudden death, endless overtime. I never liked that. But the goalies get to shoot. Have to shoot out though. From one net to the other net, they just have to shoot. Right. That. Is there a goalie in the net defending? Yeah. Then what's the point? Yeah, that that's never gonna go in. Kyle. It'll go in. I mean, no, there's, there's, it's happened. It'll go in, but, but not. I mean, if it's just one out, no one in between them, how would they miss it? They they whiff on saves. They it's happened. Ah oh, man, at that point you're instantly or, fired. Or they they the the goalie will flip the puck up and it'll just bounce off the ice at a weird angle, and instead of skipping, it catches it and it wobbles and it just misplaces it. That'd be horrible to watch. Yeah. See, I, I like the shootout in regulation or in a regular season, but I like the way that they have the playoffs for it, it's it's more exciting because you see teams like really like bust out. The, I don't know. It's like I don't know. There's something exciting about like I mean, I've, being a Blackhawks fan, I've watched a lot of playoff games that have gone into double and triple overtime, full twenty minute periods played. Like it's it's really exciting. Big fan and frustrating. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like I like the shootout a lot. Like I, I like I said, I like it for the I like the aspect of it for the regular season because it means that there's no ties. Like you know, they don't have to work a a point into the systems for ties or something like that. You know, that the way that they have the you point shouldn't be able to tie in any sport. I always hated that. Shouldn't be able to tie in anything. You should do that with the NFL. Just do a field goal shootout at the end. I I've said, um, have the kickers go head to head. You start at thirty, go to thirty five. First one to miss loses. Not fair, because then the Seahawks are going to lose every time. Get a better kicker. They have Blair Walsh. Ooh, Blair Walsh versus uh, uh, David Akers. Think about that. Though. Like, you play the overtime quarter. If no one scores, kickers just go head-to-head. It'd be really boring to watch if you were at the game, but <laughs> no ties. College used to do a thing where it's like four downs. You start at the, the 20 yep. or something. No. I wish they, they could be adapted. Do. do they still do that? Yeah. I thought they changed that. I, I, I hate that there's ties in the NFL. Those I hate never it. Be. You shouldn't be able to tie in anything. And it's become like somewhat common over the past like yeah, fifteen I feel years. Like, like actually last year too. We've seen a good we've amount. seen ties like we saw the, the Seahawks uh, 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 Cardinals game. Yeah, game fucking ended like what was it the score like nine to nine to nine or yeah. something like that. Like and and both kickers missed field goals and extra time or overtime and everything. There, there was a London game. I don't know if it was last year or the year before. It was Washington and Cincinnati, maybe. It they was. F- they flew out to London and tied. Fans over there were pretty pissed. Hey, uh, they might have enjoyed it. It was a will tie. Yep. Get out. <laughs> You're lucky we don't have the private stock. We all are. We've all made That's, terrible uh, jokes so far. Well, how about Enjoy you just box. take a, like a scoop of that candle and eat it? <laughs> well, all right. Um, can I Can I pose a question, Paul? Yeah, sure. Uh, saw a couple reports floating around. Do you think there's any truth that Tom Brady doesn't play this upcoming season? No. Oh, he's playing. He's playing. He won't go out like that. It's classic Patriots media. It's a lot of negative attention so that they can come out and go 16 and out. <laughs> Brady will play forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, last, last night, a, a, a semi-intoxicated Kendall Reed said that Tom Brady was the, and the Patriots are the greatest organization in football. That's right. Yeah. They are. He tried to name our wiffle ball team the Patriots. Because <laughs> we're the best. What were you drinking? <laughs> well, bush. a lot of bush. <laughs> and, and some, uh, what, we, what was it? We had yingling. Well, it started off with, like, Kendall, we'll meet you at the bowling alley. So we get there, and Kendall's sitting in the car with a 30 of bush in the passenger seat. <laughs> it's the best way to buy beer. Why am I going to waste my money getting a six-pack? Just buy in bulk. Got a point. You should have got a keg. I don't think they had kegs. I had to go to the back room to get that 30. And the whole like, family was there. It was weird. That's a nice... The, where you went, though, that was a nice liquor store. Yeah, there was, like, to go in there there was like 12 people behind the counter. Yeah. But they, 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 were they eating dinner? No. <laughs> it was, you know, it was $22. I asked what the cheapest was. $22? 20, she charged me twenty two seventy one. I think it was. Oh, man. It's a good price. I almost got the... <laughs> no, 30, it's not. <laughs> no. I almost got the 36 at Keystone. That was actually the cheapest. But like, eh, you know what? Don't I just can't. I can't. I'm going to spoil <laughs> myself tonight. <laughs> I've earned this. Um, I think Brady plays also. Yeah. Um, 
But could anything change if they end up drafting a quarterback in the first round? No, because we'll no. just send them to the 49ers. <laughs> Be the best backup quarterback of all time. <laughs> um, no, go ahead. Same question, but Rob Gronkowski. Um, I think he's more unlikely not to come back. Well, I, this doesn't mean anything, but he said he's going to play if Brady plays. Yeah, I, just, I, I think he's going to play, and I think as, I think if he can manage to string 16 games together without getting hurt, I think he'll continue to play. I think I think the next injury, like the next multiple game injury he gets, like if he gets hit, you know, like and he just gets like, you know, like a contusion or something like that, like on his arm or something like that, and he just, they're just like, you should sit out a game. We didn't, but I mean, like if he gets like a serious, like a knee injury or concussion, I think, I think he hangs up the cleats. See, for me, I, I think he, he's got to be looking at someone like Pat McAfee who left and is killing it with Barstool yeah. now. So he's getting paid to sit and talk, you know, still talk football. He's still around the game, except he can do whatever he wants. I'd be all about it. Get AJ Hawk out of there. <laughs> but I mean, I, I think Gronkowski's looking at that and he's like, "Hey, listen, I can stop. Play. I've made a ton of money playing. I can still be around the game." He's probably made more money off Dunkin' Donuts than he has off the kind of yeah, so, I mean, but he I, can easily find endorsements. He, Barstool would jump all over because he has that personality. Or he would join the WWE. They're looking at. But, I'm all about either of those. You know things. what though? <laughs> I don't think he would do it just because he has the injury history. He may show up and do spots here, and there, but he's not going to be in like an every. Oh my God, could day you imagine wrestling. Rob Gronkowski and Pat McAfee tag team champions. <laughs> <laughs> Pat McAfee brings back the brings back the Orton punt. That would suck. Imagine that would hurt a lot <laughs> from him. <laughs> I could see a show him and Shaq. What oh my fun. God! What a lot of fun that would be. Well, they were at a concert together, and Rob Gronkowski was like on Shaq's shoulders. I've never seen such a tall thing in my life. Imagine. Rob Gronkowski, Marshawn Lynch. Oh, man. I they listen, did that. It'd be hilarious. They already did that. The video game thing. Yeah, the video uh, game thing on the Conan. When they were when they played each other in the Super Bowl, they played Mortal Kombat. And it's uh, I'll find oh, the video. We'll post watch. it to Facebook. It's so funny. Because I tell you, Marshawn's the funniest guy oh, you in the NFL. This. Have you have you watched his show that he has? Yeah. Where he has like, all the people on there yeah, doing weird talents. It's yeah. hilarious. Oh, it's so funny. He's like, what? <laughs> Remember you told me the thing about like him on the, the ladder? Oh, so the plates? He, yeah, well, the there plates. There was a lady that rode a giant unit. This thing yeah, was like yeah. 10 feet tall. And she was throwing plates up onto her <laughs> under her. She had like a pole on her head. Oh, no. They were bowls. Oh, And bowls. she was just literally flipping them onto her head. And then Marshawn's like, I'm going to get on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and he's standing on the ladder, and all the producers are like, uh, Marshawn, <laughs> don't no. Do it. They had no. The, they had the guy that was doing like the bag flips, and he's just sitting on the couch looking at him. He's like, I could do that. I could, I could do that. Oh no! Um, <laughs> um, all right. So this one a little more intriguing, but um, what's more effective in the NFL: passing to set up the run or running to set up the pass? Running to set up the pass. Uh, I tend to flip flop on this, but I think uh, run to set up the pass. I also think run to set up the pass. I also think run. To See, set I up think the pass to set up the run. It's a pass heavy. It's a pass heavy NFL now, and, and that's why. Um, I mean, you could see it with a team like the Patriots. They get enough out of their running backs to open up passing lane. It's it's super important. You could see. Look at no. the Giants the last few years. No, I agree with it. It's super important. But I, in the NFL, the way it works, there's just so many receiving backs now, and all that type of thing. And and like the, we, the draw play has been so much more, in, like a prevalent run option the past five years and it has been the past 50 years and um you can't really run an effective draw if you're not passing the ball well true well there's basically two schools of thought <laughs> bears eat beats bears beats battlestar galactica that's for you office fans out there i uh, just wanted to throw that in there i wish we had yep like, that was medicine. that was a uh, cry for the private stock i'll take the candle please <laughs> 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 no but I, I i agree with what what I agree with what you say, Paul. Um, the, uh, especially uh, the draw is like, so prevalent. I mean, I think well, because I think like the screen game, all that stuff. It's a glorified so, run. <laughs> I think it's. I, th I, I think it's pa pass to set up the run. I'm just looking at the Saints. They had like a historic offensive season, and it's because we finally were able to run to set up Drew. We didn't need to pass as much. That's the only reason I think it's important to run heavy first. If you establish the run, you don't need to pass, essentially. I tell you, what, what irritated me, because you, you said about Breeze, 
when they were talking like if he was going to get his extension or not, everyone kept noting that his numbers were down last year. Yeah, but it was uh, that's the, the most irrelevant the argument out there. Those <laughs> it's the most irrelevant analytics. argument. Well, he was still he was top five, wasn't he? Didn't he didn't he finish fifth in passing? Sure. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. <laughs> Come I on, he, Jeff. I think he was still over four thousand yards, <laughs> but he usually has you know fifty two hundred somewhere around there. So they're like, oh, well, his numbers are down. He's getting old. I'm like. No, he had 2,000-yard <laughs> rushers and didn't have to throw. Make yep. a comparison. It's like Carmelo, Pissed except he's much better than Carmelo at his sport. Carmelo had, like, 20-plus his whole career because he was the guy. Once he has help, his numbers plummet. Yeah. But Breeze is doing much better than it's Carmelo. It's fantasy owners, <laughs> though. You don't want that. You wait until Hoodie Breeze comes out. Hoodie Breeze. <laughs> You don't want that. I, I don't want that. <laughs> It'll just be Christian Kowski. I made a trade with Jeff this year for Drew Brees. Oh, I baited him into that trade. But it's okay because Kyle got the victory. Yeah. Boo. Because all my... T- Never mind. You know, your trophy is still at the house. Yeah, it, it's better off. That's there. how much he loves his victory. Kyle was determined to have, oh, whoever wins has to pay to get it engraved. Is that engraved yet? No. Yeah. Though I agree, <laughs> it's better off at the house. Come on. <laughs> Isn't that a treat? Like, hey, you won. Now pay for this trophy. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I've never won. Well, you the, know, the, back anything. to the, the running thing, though. I look at a team like the Steelers. Uh, I think that passing to set up the run helps the Steelers a lot more than running to set up the pass. Because they are you already got Ben, who's able to, to do all kinds of stuff with the football, and then you put in arguably the greatest wide receiver in football, and then a bunch of you know upcoming talent around him. And then you look at a running back like Le'Veon Bell, who... Is that a wide patient, receiver that also runs? Well, no, the ball? but just like that, I'm talking about his running style. Just that patient, you know, hopping around, find the gap type of thing. And Terrorism. if you've already been successful in passing, it means that these linebackers are going to be into coverage. It means that these safeties are going to be playing a little deeper. They're going to be playing, you know, the it's going to be not, you know, they're not going to be playing press man coverage. They're going to be, you know, lofting off so that they can kind of read the route a little better. And then when you do hand off the ball to Bell, there's only going to be the defensive line trying to find the gaps to get through. Versus a seven-man blitz with cornerbacks playing up. I, I, you can look at it the other way, though, too. If, if you look at the Rams last year versus two years ago, when Gurley couldn't move the ball at all, they couldn't throw it. There, there was no threat of the run, so everyone's staying back to stop the pass. This past season, Gurley was running people over, and it opens up the passing game. I mean, it, you can look at it either way, and you can't. Can't say either way is wrong. Does, they they no help each other. Answer. It's, oh, it's uh, dependent Seattle. on What's the team Seattle? and personnel. If you're Seattle, you got no fucking run game. And you're just begging on Russell Wilson doing some crazy shit to move the ball. <laughs> doing some crazy shit. <laughs> what what probably is the most effective thing is you have to have a quarterback that can recognize the defense he's looking at and be able to, you know, adjust. Peyton Manning. Yeah. Not James Winston. <laughs> nope. I like the greatest Peyton Manning play when uh, Omaha, Omaha, when they started off versus the Ravens, and he threw for like six touchdowns. But the best one is when he rolls out, fools everybody, <laughs> runs it in himself. <laughs> awesome play. Was that the year that you won? Uh, I think so. Had to admit. And I'm did. glad you brought that up. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> you know everyone has these trophies and cash incentives. You know what I got? I got a little statistic on the Yahoo Sports app. That's what I got. <laughs> so thanks a lot, Paul. Next question, please. <laughs> Um, and another thing, Souls. <laughs> Just win more. This one, we'll do this one before we uh, we move on. This one's always this always gets a heated thing. Are you like about to sneeze? <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> no, I'm fucking stretching. <laughs> I'm tired. I did more physical activity last yesterday than I've done in my whole life. <laughs> Maybe this tired after sex. Um, I usually just sneeze after sex. Um. <laughs> You're down by two. Who do you want taking the shot to win the game? NBA Finals Game 7. Kobe, LeBron, or Jordan? Ish, Smith. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you probably should just finish that for that comment. Well, I have very shaky hands. I don't know why. Down two with, we'll call it 1.6 seconds to go. Last shot, Game 7 of the oh. NBA Finals. You'd be Jordan. And it's you, you can choose, you know, go for two to tie or go for three for the win, whatever. I'm going with Jordan. Most versatile out of the three. Jordan. I'm going to go ahead and say Kobe. Why? 
Um, my first reason that right there is why I didn't say Kobe. <laughs> my first reason why you would ask you why. Yep. Well, my first reason is because everyone says Kobe when they're shooting into the garbage can. That's my first reason. But you look that at a guy. A valid argument. <laughs> you look at a guy who's very has a true. Traditionally, he's a ball hog. We know this. Uh, very accurate, and that's because he's taking the highest percentage of shots because he has the ball so much. Uh, no disrespect to Jordan. Great ball player. We know this. Uh, he's all right. It's it just a, I, when I think of a guy who who wins enough that I can kind of make up what I'm trying to say right now and have it make sense <laughs> to you guys, and I can BS just a little bit longer and have really no backing reason to what I said, is why I picked Just say Kobe. Kobe's clutch. That's all you have to fucking say. Isn't that what I just said? Not really. Listen, read between the lines. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Kobe. That was so painful. Jordan <laughs> had the most consistent shot. LeBron, I'm afraid for him because he, he he misses threes a lot. And if they foul him, he's not the greatest of the free throw shooters. And you, jo- you know Jordan's going to make both of them. That's, yeah. Not only that, no matter where Jordan – because I'm assuming it's an inbounds play. Wherever he gets the ball, whether it's beyond the arc, mid-range, close range, open lane, he's proficient in all of those. Kobe's three ball isn't as good as Jordan's. If it's a half-court shot, I might pick Kobe, but I don't know. But then, I mean, Kobe does have big shots. Yeah, I mean, did you just hear what I said? I uh, (laughs) I did. (laughs) We all did. You didn't hear all that nonsense? (laughs) Yeah, well, one Utah game, I pictures in my head, and I just be like, "That's that would be and the moment every time that with Jordan had the ball in his hands." Like, not to take that away from LeBron, but yeah, he he has a less consistent deep range. Still well, a great. I mean, player. LeBron for I, I can speak the last couple of years. Isn't he typically like a when he need the late shot, he was passing more than taking the shot. Well, I mean, there was that like one game against like was it the Wizards? The one where he hit like a fade away, fade away out of bounds shot, banked in. That was disgusting. And then him and Derrick Rose exchanged game winners throughout the whole series when it was the Bulls mm. Cavs. That That's what I mean. Like you can't take it away from LeBron that he's not going to make it. I mean, you're talking about the three best players in basketball of our lifetime. Can I go with Shaq? No. Because <laughs> he wasn't what one about of the Ben choice. Wallace. <laughs> Rashid was. I would not go. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say that because then he'll pop up behind me and say, what? <laughs> that, that meme needs to resurface. That that meme. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm saying Kobe Bryant. Um, oh, go ahead. Tulsa. I was just going to say why. Oh, okay. Well, let me tell you. Um, oh, I'm here. So, I'm going to say Kobe Bryant, but I'll you what? I meant Ben Wallace. I said Ben <laughs> Wallace. <laughs> My reasoning is just simply because of the the situation I put it in with like one point something seconds left. Um, for me, Kobe Bryant of the three is going to be the best guy to catch and put up a shot and have it be accurate enough to go in. Um, not that Jordan can't catch and shoot or LeBron for that matter, but LeBron and Jordan are m- much better at the back down fadeaway type of move or the create your own shot, get the separation. Kobe can do that well as well, but Kobe is just so much more explosive at just getting the ball and just going up and doing some wild circus shot, whether it's from beyond the arc or inside. Um, so just given the circumstance of there not being enough time to really set up a, a play, like Jordan can't get the ball and, you know, take a dribble and like do his thing or LeBron can't do that either. So for me, it's just, you know, just get Kobe the ball and Kobe will, you know, he'll catch it with his back to the hoop and within four tenths of a second, He'll be up, yeah. fading away. He does have a very quick shot. and the, Yeah, and so that's why I pick Kobe. And he doesn't flinch if you try to fake him with the ball. Yeah. Matt that Barnes. video is very yeah. funny. That dude, it's just on a whole other level sucks. of competition. You guys remember in Lake Mike when uh, Lil Bow Wow fooled Jason Kidd with the, the off-the-back inbounds play? Oh, yeah. Poor Jason Kidd. I think they, I made him, take they made Jason, Jason Kidd look like a huge dick in that movie, too. <laughs> See, like what you just said about Kobe, Kobe was just like that cold-blooded... Assassin player, like he was an assassin. He was the Mamba, Black Mamba. Still taking, almost as good as taking the white, white chocolate uh, over all of them. See, I was gonna say that. Yeah, white but you Mamba. Didn't. I'd rather have him taking the like last Scalabrine. 
Yeah. So if Scalabrine uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, Williams ever had a kid, would it be would it be white mamba still, or would, would, it, be, would it be the mamba. chocolate? Mamba? <laughs> white chocolate. It'd be white mamba. chocolate. But it, no, it's our, no, but Jason Williams is already white. Or, Christ, so would it be chocolate? Would it be chocolate mamba? The chocolate mamba. But the white the chocolate mamba. This is riveting. <laughs> the white chocolate. And mamba. we lost our last one. <laughs> Cookies and cr- now we're done. We're done with this. <laughs> Oreo. Um, we can't do this anymore. Oreo. Stop it. <laughs> so that's going to kind of segue into a discussion we'll have when we come back. I, I big fan of this, but so I got a couple more um, player ones we'll do before we we go into the break. Um, so going down the stretch, um, you're putting together your game winning drive. Okay. So you're, you're down seven. Down seven. Right? No. Yeah. You're down seven. Down seven. You're going for the win. Okay. Who are you putting together? Who's your receiver, your quarterback, and your running back for a final drive for a, uh, t- touchdown two point conversion? Is this the playoffs? Eli and Burris. (laughs) (laughs) Doesn't matter. Oh, it does. No, it doesn't. Doesn't matter. Because you you, football football is one of those rare sports, or like has one of those rare sport moment type things where it's like there's like winning a regular season game is pretty much as important as winning a postseason game because one loss in football is like losing like four straight weeks in the MLB. (laughs) Like it's. It's a lot more devastating to lose one game in football than it is to lose four straight games in NBA or NHL or to lose six series in the And are you talking just current players or Um people from our generation. So it was the quarterback and receiver you want. And the running back. And the running back. So you put up the final drive. Who, right. who are the three guys that you want at the helm? All right. Tom Brady, Antonio Brown, Marshawn Lynch. Okay. I'm still thinking. I don't want to go yet. All right. So Tom Brady. Um, I, I hate to be the homer, but I guess I'm gonna go Antonio Brown, and I guess Ladainian Tomlinson. Okay. All right. You go Brady Moss and Le'Veon Bell. Breeze Fitzgerald and Matt Forte. Nice old school squad. I like that. See, I was going to say Peyton Manning, Larry Fitzgerald, LaDainian Tomlinson. Those are my three. Where's Fitzgerald Toussaint on this list? I don't That's what I said. Right. I have him in I, as a receiver. I thought so. <laughs> He's putting him in the slot. <laughs> no, I'm putting him in the tight end. <laughs> so I, didn't do that fly. I thought you meant like on a team together like the Oh no no foundation. no. No, sorry. You you can you can readjust your pick. No, if you'd no. Like. I think I think I'm going to lock in. Who did I pick? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm waiting for Kendall to just start wearing Patriots gear. It's going to happen. Real quick, I just want to jump back. This is Tucson's breakout year. You watch. 2018 is the year. And Chris Gregg, by the way. It's <laughs> This is his year. Are it's you, only a matter of time before Kendall has a Tom Brady again. jersey. You got to follow him on Instagram. It's his year. It is only a matter of time before Can you I think Brady if you jersey. finish last in fantasy this year, you have to buy a Tom Brady jersey. He'll come in last so. on purpose. He wants one. You will come in last on purpose. He just doesn't know how to draft. <laughs> Kyle, I won the league one year. <laughs> yeah. You're such... Well, remember, Kyle's what? on this pedestal. I know. Because he makes everyone look foolish, right, Kyle? That's right. Yeah, I beat you sometimes. Well, I mean, when you're in eight leagues a year, you have enough practice, right? You Did you practice. finally get that money from that other league? Yeah, I got it. Only took yeah. him to the next football season. You're gonna come a, at me? a lot less yes. than he thought he was going to get. <laughs> Not really. Who, who yes, holds the trophy guy. right now? Where is it? It's at Kendall's house. So Kendall's the champion. That's right. What kind of champion loses their trophy? I didn't lose it's it. not in your possession. I just don't want it's to It's not in your possession. possession. I didn't want it to break. Yeah. Kyle, it sat in your room for months. The entire season it was That's there. That's like you, you, win, come it, you win a championship <laughs> okay. belt and hand it you to one guys. of your friends. Like, See, what it comes down to, Kyle, is you won't just accept that there's a huge degree of luck in fantasy. No. Yes, yes it is. When you, draft, when you draft Eddie Lacy first, you know you Kyle, fucked up. Kyle, you can't no. say that. That's wrong. You can't That's wrong. say that. Because That's that, that was the season. Heard. He was going first overall in every Eddie, league. Bell, Bell was suspended we for four games. We all made fun games. of him for picking him first. No, we didn't. We made fun of him after the league. No, we <laughs> made fun of him during the 
<laughs> oh, you guys although, are all liars. Although that was the season. Eddie Lacy was a solid oh. pick that year, Kyle. That was the season I tried to trade Kendall Antonio Brown for Eddie Lacy. He <laughs> said no. Because you have to keep your was first that pick. that the league you, you have offered to like everyone and then they got hurt? I think you that was like the year after, person. but yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. everybody mock oh, tried to trade for it, got hurt. Everybody. It was awful. I'd be like, oh. Jeff, Jeff laughed at was me. Was it Jamal Charles? <laughs> Jamal Charles, I forget for who. Maybe it was Antonio Brown. I was be- like, no way, dude. <laughs> he laughed. <laughs> Next I game, sent oh. it to him, and he responded, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> and then Charles tore his ACL. <laughs> that came back to bite me, though. I tried to trade Jeff for Odell last year, and then he got hurt. <laughs> I think Jeff has the most injuries. Oh, ever. his he's gets killed I mean, year after year. Paul's a close second too. Yeah, unfortunately, like whereas like Jeff suffers from like injury prone like fantasy football teams, my real football team is always <laughs> injury prone. So like, you know, there's that. I lost five running backs this year. Well, you should probably know that going into the draft then, since it's not luck. I'm gonna be the biggest winner of fantasy football 2018 because I'm not playing. You've said this for two years now. No, it's not. I won't have it. Last time we had this discussion, you said I played. I did. It. I only said it one but year. But maybe it was just last year, and this is the second year. I'm not playing. Are oh, you playing? You play. I'm not playing. You guys can't make me play. Well, then we have to go and get somebody else. And, that's and that means they're going to win. Rebecca yeah. can fill my spot. Uh, nope. You know, I think I'm not playing either. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I had the opportunity to tie with her this past year in a separate league, which is worse than losing. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get those uh, fraction uh, points. Yep. All right, uh, we're about we're gonna take a break. Um, when we come back from the break, uh, Maxine Walsh will uh, not be here. Yes, so say your goodbyes. Right. I will see everybody next week. And um, when we come back, we're also gonna let the the crew here do some thinking. But when we come back, we're gonna name our five opinion five greatest NBA players of all time in order. And we'll have more after the break. Welcome back to Getting Sports with Drunk. I'm your host, Cupcake the Riddler, and I'm joined by assholes. Wait. Minus 86. The most gaping asshole. Mark Sheen Walshwell stepped out. He has a very important acoustic session to be a part of. Uh, he doesn't play an instrument unless you count his anus. <laughs> <laughs> rich. Rich Martin. Rich. Ah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, we are Facebook Live. Um, so I don't really know. Kendall, where can they find us? Uh, we're on PPRN on their Facebook page, and I was able to correct it so it says GSWD Live now, not the Peter Pino show. So after the X amount of weeks we've been doing this, it now just says GSWD Live. So, Wow. Uh, yeah, it's good stuff. I'm going to try to get that up, and I'll share it uh, so you guys can find us. Yeah, you, you, you do that. You do that now, you hear? No, I will. I will. I promise. Souls. Hey. How are you? I'm doing all right. Good. Good. Me too. All right. All right, well, that's it for us this week. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> um, I'd like to uh, make a correction from uh, the last last hour there. The Washington Capitals are actually up 3-2. to two Up 3-2? Oh. Over the Blue Jackets, yep. So they'll blow it. A lot of overtimes. Um, yeah, I don't know. You got, I, mean, I, I know you didn't watch the game, Kyle. But Matt Calvert, you should watch his goal that he had. Pretty beautiful. So he had a breakaway. Went to, went to um, pull a wrister. Completely fanned on it bad. Then ended up doing a spin move, gathering the puck, and backhanding it into the net. Triple deke at its finest. Uh, that's not... The, yeah, yeah, okay. Triple deke. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. Triple deke at its finest. Souls. Paul. How excited are you about the Sixers right now? Very. Yep, 3-1. We just took two in Miami, which are very tough because they're very physical. But now we get to go home, and we're going to knock them out in game five. Six. Oh, we beat him in game five. The one man that Don't sleep on him. I'm not. But you slept on Ursan. He's a big Fuck reason why Ursan. He's the big reason why they're winning Fuck right Ursan. now. I love when people describe other teams as physical. Like, of course they are. They're a professional sports team. But they're the, they're actually <laughs> physical. Yeah, like the Sixers are soft. <laughs> I just love like they're not soft. All right, all right. I just like that face. Why don't you show the Makes the camera happy. your shirt soles? You know you can stand. No. All right. Joel and Beach shirt. Kyle, you look jacked right now. Ugh. Yeah, you've been working out, hitting the gym. Nope. Eating <laughs> more carbs and. And not... talking near the microphone. Shut up. Not eating more carbs and watching more TV. 
Same. <laughs> so. Seems to seems to work for me. Does it? No, I don't think so. Um, all right, so we we should we talk about it. Let's just do this now because this could this could get a little lengthy in discussion with Kyle Souls and Jeff Martin pissing off Kyle Souls. Oh man, that smile! All right, so so before the break, we're gonna do some thinking. Top five NBA players of all time in order, one through five. So who wants to go first? Kendall. All right, I always gotta go first. The weakest link has to go first. <laughs> all right, uh, of all time, top five, five up. Um, so I'm gonna probably go with um, Wilt Chamberlain at the five. Not playing the five, just at my five, because I knew you guys would jump all over it. <laughs> I <I'll> do. <laughs> uh, Wilt Chamberlain's my five. Uh, I guess yeah, I'm, I'm snoring on me too. Um. <laughs> Hmm. Charles Barkley is my four. <laughs> oh my god, he's pretty good. He was pretty good. But he was, yeah, he was, just put him the, above the, Wilt but Chamberlain. The, the top five of all time, and he used pretty good to describe somebody. <laughs> well, I might need to readjust my order. Like, to get these we were just down. talking three about three players before the break that were the greatest of all time. <laughs> it's like, number Let's four. hear what he has to yeah. say. He's pretty good. Eddie House, yeah. number three, no, is no, Smith. I can't, I can't do those guys. I love them, but. <laughs> John um, Salmons. John Salmons. Pre beard John Salmons. Um, all right, so let's get rid of Barkley. Let's get rid of him. So let's do. You can keep him at your top five. Well, yeah, but I'm thinking about it. I think I like him better as a commentator than a player. <laughs> all right, so Will Chamberlain. I'm going to do. Let me do this way Michael Jordan's my one, Kobe, two, LeBron, three. Um, Wrong. All right, souls. There's no right or wrong. <laughs> Indeed. Um, <laughs> There's no right or wrong except for Barkley. <laughs> yeah, right. And then <laughs> Will Chamberlain, Jerry West. Justice Winslow. Just pulls the Jerry, Jerry West, West out. Real quick, how much funnier would Charles Barkley be if, like, half the time he sounded like Charles Barkley and the other half he sounded like Foghorn Leghorn? <laughs> well, I, I said, I said. <laughs> um, all right, it's interesting. I didn't get to see Wilt play. You didn't get to see Jerry West play either. <laughs> I was going to say that. And you didn't really see Jordan play. I mean, no. You were alive for it, but That's you didn't watch basketball. I mean. No, of course not. You were too enthralled with cricket. It's a great sport. Actually, I watched cricket uh, a couple of times at the library. Oh, boy. You know what that means. I was working in the library. I wasn't attending the library. I'm not a nerd. <laughs> nerd. <laughs> nerd. Oh, <laughs> no, no. It sounds to me like you love, oh. you love some. I do love the library. Mm -hmm. I just feel her eyes. On my face. Get away. Souls, what's your list? Do you you want to go next or you want me to go next? I'll go or, next. or J Mart? Take well, it away, Souls. One of, one, of our th uh, one of us three have to go next. Take it away, Souls. Well, that's not wow, true. The, the math is really coming together. <laughs> so we'll carry the two one. Can go next. Now I go Jordan, LeBron, then Will, then Shaq, then Kobe. All right. Wait, who'd you have at the three? Will. And four was Shaq. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll save the discussions. Jeff, do you want to go next, Jeff? Number one, Pat Ewing. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Ewing Jr. He sucks. So it's going to go Jordan at the one. Bill Russell, two. Ooh. Wilt, oh, three. <laughs> LeBron, four. With the potential to go up. Five is the toughest. But I'm going to go with Tim Wilt. Duncan, Larry Bird. Wilt. Larry Bird. Larry Bird. Wow. Oh. Fuck, forgot about him. Would you put him in your top five? I would. So take someone out. Taking Kobe out and putting Larry at your five? No. Kobe's going to four. Co Larry's going to four. Kobe, dang it. So Shaq's gone. <laughs> so you originally thought Shaq was better than Kobe, and now Shaq's worse than Kobe? I just have to put Kobe out. Just because Larry Bird now exists? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I have my reasonings. Okay. Do you, do you care to share them? After you go. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Uh, LeBron is my five. Corver at your four, right? <laughs> Eric Snow's at the four. Sorry. Ooh, I like this team. <laughs> no. Uh, LeBron at the five. Tyron Lue at the four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
LeBron at the five. Sick bastard. So. <laughs> um. I'm waiting for like the next. Terry Rozier. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, Stockton at the four. Jerry Stackhouse at the three. Or Matt Geiger. Here no, choice. Jamal McGlure. Because we're forgetting about Avery. And Jared oh. Washburn. Oh, God. All right, so can we do this without interruptions? Because right. there's a lot of right. names. Alvin Gentry. <laughs> All right, get him out. Get him out. Come on, keep saying the names. Whatever. Uh, I'm good now. Oh, good uh, now? One more. Hito Turgaloo. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, right, 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 I'll, right. I'll throw one in. Delonte right. West. Um, <laughs> Big fan. Dante Jones. Okay, no, no, we gotta stop. Are you we'll done, do Souls? We'll do this for the rest yeah, of the I got show. Yeah, I got one. You got one more? No, I'm good. You're good? You sure? Because you're itching right now to say <laughs> a name. <laughs> Until you hit the one. Just say the name. I, I gotta think of it. I gotta think no. of a good one. I can't waste it yet. You know, that's, it. I'm not, once I start, you have to stop. All right. Todd McCulloch. Gross. <laughs> Are you pleased with yourself? <laughs> 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 All right. LeBron at the five. Stockton at the four. Uh, Kobe at the three. Shaq at the two. Jordan at the one. Nevada Divac at the six. So, uh, <laughs> via text, we got Mike Mock's uh, top five. Number one, LeBron. Number two, Jordan. Number three, Bill Russell. Four, Wilt. Number five, Larry Bird. Kyle, uh, he definitely just went up and was like, who's the five greatest NBA players of all time? <laughs> like, he definitely just heard it and then was just like, I'm just going to rearrange it so they don't really think I cheated. Because he had no idea who the fuck Bill Russell is. I think everyone wow. knows who Bill Russell is. Not Mock. I think he knows who Bill he, Russell is. Now, would you say that if he was sitting next to you? Yeah. All he knows is Anthony Davis and Omir Ashik. I think he knows. Who isn't who, a Pelican? I'm, <laughs> I'm going to give him the, the benefit of the doubt he knows who Bill Russell is. It's hard not to know. Yeah, but do you think he knows who Kevin McHale is? Maybe not. Yeah. Or or Robert Parrish? He's like, he yeah. I know Roscoe Parrish. He's like, Robert Parrish, that's the guy that made those shoes in Jumanji, right? All right. Left's hanging. All right. Way to go, Kendall. Left right. Jmart hanging on a Bills reference. Sorry, hold on. Let's see what Mark has to say. Nope. He said he did not. That's my five. At Robert Parrish, I own his jersey. Doesn't fit that well anymore. Roscoe. Roscoe Parrish. You don't what own a I Robert. Said? You don't own a Robert Parrish jersey. I do. No, you don't. I don't. I do own a, <laughs> I do own a Roscoe Parrish. Doesn't fit. You wouldn't own a Celtics jersey. I wouldn't. I hate the Celtics. I hate all Boston sports. Horrible. You heard it first. He's a Yankees fan over a Red Sox fan. That's right. Nah. <laughs> Wish Long Island had a team. <laughs> they do. The Ducks. All righty. You think I'm kidding? The Long Island Ducks. It's an independent league team. Are they in the same league as the Bree- the Bees? Yeah. Uh. Elgato Alfonso used to play there. When I was doing the board for the Bees, I remember the Ducks. Uh, and they had somebody who was pretty funny. I remember the commentator. He goes, "It was about a relief pitcher." He goes, "This guy has not blown a save in like 80 games or something." What does he do? He blows to save. Goes another five innings. Remember the whole thing with Jose Offerman? Where he chased the umpire down with the bat? Hmm? He was on the Ducks at that time. Yeah, he's a sick guy. He, so Milton Bradley's back in jail. All right, so, so let's get off the <laughs> <Sorry>. Ducks. <laughs> All right, so uh, Kyle, would you like to go first on some comments? Um, sure. Uh. Oh, wow, that was a good one. Um, so all of them are pretty much kind of similar except like a few – Different players. Can they're all pretty re- similar. Adjust your mic a little bit. for different. Lift it up a little bit. No, no, they're the, all similar, yeah. except they're all completely different. Is what he's trying to say. You know what I'm trying to say. Uh, See, it's just it's hard to say because Wilt Chamberlain played at a different time where there weren't a lot of seven footers. Like the tallest guys were that's like why, six sorry. eight. I'll wait. So it's just different. Like if you played in today's game, you don't know if he would be as dominant as he was. All right, so I'll just I'll just go off the cusp then and. and and I'll defend my team then. So I think, you know, I, it's been discussed. I, I think it's too hard to say whether Jordan, Kobe, or LeBron are the greatest player of all time. Um, they are all very well-rounded players offensively and defensively and can score the ball very well. Um, I think that LeBron is the best all-around player that we've ever seen. I think Kobe is the greatest scorer we've ever seen, and I think Michael Jordan's the most clutch we've ever seen. That's That's the way I look at it. Um, so I, I put Jordan at my one simply for the fact that he won six championships, that he was a lights out scoring leader, that he, you know, he was taking a, a Bulls team before they had the, the, the all-star roster, you know, he was giving them playoff appearances, a team that was, you know, absolute trash. And then he, he turned around and he proved that like 
you know, the Bulls, as great of a team as they were, those first three championships they won, couldn't do it without him. He left, and they, they couldn't get it done. And then, I mean, they didn't play a terrible season, but, you know, and they came back and had the, you know, arguably the greatest season in NBA history. Um, for me, it's too hard to do one, two, three, like uh, Jordan, Kobe, and LeBron, because um, they're, they're very, like I said, they're very similar players, very similar positions. I mean, I know LeBron plays the three, three slash four, and then Kobe and Jordan were two slash threes. But Shaq is the most dominating big man we've ever seen in the NBA, in my opinion. I mean, he the sheer size of him. I mean, he's not only is he seven foot, but he's not a, he's not a, a, a scrawny seven footer. He's not, you know he's not a Sean Bradley. The guy's got a lot of weight to him, and yes. he knew how to use it. I mean, the guy was a complete fierce competitor on the boards, blocking, dunking, at, very quick for somebody for his size. He had very good footwork. Yeah, very good footwork. I mean, for, for and three hundred pounds, and, seven plus. It's and insane. for somebody who shot like from this for their career for fifty percent from the free throw line, he hit him when it counted, like. The shack, the shack, hack a shack rule. It only worked until there was like two minutes left, and the game was like within three points. Because then he'd make them. Um, so then I put Kobe at the the three, just because in a big shot situation, I'm taking Kobe over LeBron. Um, I just I, I think Kobe is a better scorer than LeBron. Um, take it for what you will. I just do. Um, and then I put. Stockton just because of the sheer number of assists and steals that the guy had. Yeah, I mean, it just looks untouchable when you look at the record books. It, he's the, he's the only, in my opinion, he's the only NBA player that's got a like a statistic that like probably never be broken. I mean, the rebounds will be hard to break as well. Um, but at the same time, there's just so many shots going up now that who knows? Um, we very well could see it, but. The assist numbers are just insane, and the steal numbers are even more insane. The guy was a complete, like, just nuisance to a plus defender. I mean, he might be the greatest perimeter defense defender to ever play the game, and he is the embodiment of what a point guard is, hands down. Yeah, there is a name that no one said. Hakeem Olajuwon, not just him, Magic Johnson. That should be in the top three. Hmm. Kyle, could you adjust your mic again? You really just moved it closer. There's a lot of big names. I don't know if he's a top three. So, Kyle, you just you lifted it up, and then you put it right back down. Perfect. There you go. You want to talk about the black part, not the silver part. What are you talking about? Exactly. <laughs> Who? I think Magic Johnson. Magic should, Johnson? Yeah, yeah, he should be. I think he's a top three player of all time. Why didn't you say him? <laughs> Forgot about him until just now. I said top ten. I don't know. Top three. There's so, uh, you, who would you put? In front of him, and Just, behind him. Well, it would, for me, it would go Jordan, LeBron, Magic Johnson, Will, Larry Bird. I think it could go. It could go so many ways. Like I, mean. I, I like the Magic Johnson thing. For me, I, I just. I put Stockton over Johnson just because I, I feel like so many people overlook Stockton because he wasn't like this flashy ball scoring. Hand or a flashy scorer, flashy ball handler, but the guy just he played the game. Yeah, and I mean let's like let's not forget too that like Stockton probably Stockton and Malone would probably be in discussion for top five NBA players of all time if they played at any other era of NBA basketball than besides when and Jordan that's, played. That's why Larry Bird's on that list too because imagine how much he would have won without Jordan around. It's. You know, Larry Bird played, you know, the the end of his career came up with the beginning of Jordan's career. And, you know, he had the Magic Johnson and, and you know, those stars started, you know, Laker teams. I mean, you look at somebody like Bill Russell and you look at somebody like Wilt Chamberlain and you look at, you know, the, the, their teams were the teams type of thing. You know, you look now, you look at any team LeBron's on, it, you know, or, or the Warriors. Like those are the, but, I mean, for Stockton and Malone and, like, Bird, like, but specifically Malone and Stockton – the, these two probably would be the top five in anybody's numbers all time if they played. If Jordan didn't play basketball, they probably would have won three, four rings. But because of the Bulls, they won none. They were zero rings. So did we all have Jordan one? Yeah. Except Ma. No, I think he did. He had no, LeBron, Ma had LeBron one. one. He had LeBron one. Yeah. You sure? Which yeah. I don't. That that's going to be the Maybe debate we'll for Maybe. years and years and years and years and years. I look at it as. Jordan was the first to be branded like the way he is. I mean, he was 
the best basketball player anyone's ever seen. Maybe he, when it's all said and done, like when LeBron officially tires. I wasn't talking or anything, but go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I'm just saying. Yeah. If LeBron, when he, when he finally retires, might have the numbers, just his playoff and championship like championship record will never be this like never be in this discussion. That's why everybody has Jordan over LeBron. Well, it's like the Peyton Manning Tom Brady debate. Tom Brady will or Peyton Manning. Well, I mean Brady might end up breaking it, but Peyton Manning, in my opinion, will be the superior regular season quarterback. But when you look at the playoffs and the championships, it's it's hard to argue. It's a, it's an overall thing, and that's why, like you know, I, I think realistically, the only time you're ever going to have a legitimate discussion about who's better is if you start breaking down who is better at what. Like that's what I said. Like LeBron is the greatest all around player I think we've ever seen. I mean. He's big enough that he can he can I mean like Jordan and Kobe if they really wanted to if they played the five they could play they could play it efficiently but at the end of the day if you had Jordan playing against Shaq like he's not going to be as dominant as if he's playing the two but has Jordan ever flopped no that's another thing that Jordan I also, put Jordan way over the top on LeBron and well Jordan also never took rest days. Yep, the, Kobe the, didn't the league was different then it is soft now I, I mean Kobe took some rest says. days at the end of his career. But, you know, we're talking like, you know, 35 plus, the plus side of 35 for Kobe. Also, don't forget, Kobe was a complete minute hounds from the minute he came out of the into the NBA, 18. Yeah. Um, but Jordan, I mean, you look at things like, you know, you look at these players now doing like the rest days. Like, oh, you know, I'm going to take a day off just to kind of re- recharge my batteries. And then you go and you look at Jordan dropping 50 points with the flu. Yeah. Nowadays, you get guys breaking a face mask with their hands, walking back to the bench. That's that's the hardest we go. There was there's fist fight. It's just such a soft league. Jordan never took a day off. You're absolutely right. He was the toughest player. Cold. Didn't matter. He would just dominate well, night in, night out. There's a lot to be said, too. He came back twice, right? He came back to play with uh, Yeah. He, he did a season with the Wizards as the owner. Mm-hmm. I think it was. I just think it was the Wizards at the time were kind of like a struggling organization. We need was, some tickets. Yeah, I think it was <laughs> a. I think sale. it was a publicity thing to kind of get people coming to Wizards games, and then and then after that they added you know like I mean at the time people like you know Butler and Arenas and stuff like that and it became more exciting and then eventually turned into what it is now and people you know the Wizards are a more exciting franchise. Yeah. But then he got out of that. And he went and bought the Bobcats. <laughs> That's what you look at him just in like I want to see LeBron try to beat Jordan if that makes sense. You look at Jordan in his career after basketball; he still has the most successful brand. Uh, he's a huge influence. He's an owner. Like I, I want to see LeBron take those steps too. You know, I know he's got the he's a big family guy too, but I'd like to see if he you know considers ownership stake in the league, something like that. I could definitely get behind that. He's not a good owner, though. Who? Jordan. How do you figure? Because his team not always suck. Like he's, he's a big decision in all the moves that they make. I don't think he has as much yeah, he's not like stake in decision-making as you, donor. as you think he does. Like, I mean, he definitely like I, he could definitely overrule anything, but I, I don't think Jordan sits there and goes like, He's not the, "Let's the do this trade." Or, well, he wanted Frank to tank. Yeah, but I mean, but people people do those things. I mean, it happens. Everyone makes mistakes as yeah, an ownership. You get Furkin Cormans or whatever. But I mean, sometimes but, you get Ron Baker. <laughs> I think a big part of it too. Is, I think that I think Jordan was one of those guys that you know he. He loved basketball, and he had the opportunity to be a part of it forever, for his whole life, in in his home, you know, region. And I just think, it, you know, he took the opportunity for it. I think he's just doing it because he loves basketball. I think, you know, that's why AI goes to the games. I think that's why, you know, that's why... Drunk that's why, off his ass. Yeah, <laughs> drunk off his ass, but, uh, you know, I think AI goes to the Sixers because he just I loves love, basketball. I love, I love, I love these kids, man. <laughs> Oh man, I love it. You see the you see the video of him stepping over the kid. Yeah, the, the, the Tyrone I still Lou think thing. the greatest is when we were all at the game and all of a sudden they're like start like showing his highlights and then they show him up there and he's just <laughs> by himself in a box. Well, the, I was like in tears. Uh, I, I feel like people didn't go nuts for him because he's there like all the time. Well, yeah, but it's it, kind of just we're like, not. So it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, but it's, 
Yeah, I mean, but for, you know, if, breaking away from that, I, I put Shaq and Sacramento just because like I said, Shaq's just the most dominant big man we've ever seen. I mean, he, it double teams, it didn't matter. There's only been one Shaq. Yeah, there's, there's, there's never, there's never been any, nobody's ever been like, this guy's like Shaq, or who, who's the greatest center of all time, Shaq, or, like, it's just, it's Shaq. Shaq. Yeah, you hear the comparisons all the time, especially with rookies, like, oh, this guy, you know, he looks a lot like Simmons, he looks a lot like LeBron, you never heard anyone say, this guy looks a lot like Shaq, you're just not gonna. Yeah, Shaq is Shaq, and, and honestly, I really, I really think Stockton's the same way. Yeah. I mean, probably get the, talked about enough. the only person I can think of that can be somewhat comparable to John Stockton is Chris Paul yeah. or Dave Stockton. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is Chris Paul just because Chris Paul? I mean, he's not not so much now. I mean, he's still very he's still good, but like Chris Paul in his prime with the Clippers and the Hornets, he he could get he was you know very good at getting steals and he was the assist monster. But just there's there's never been another Stockton, yeah. and there was never a Stockton before him. There's a Stockton in California. That's true. Boo. <laughs> no, I liked it. It was good. So I w- a little off topic, but I want to talk about this real quick. So anyway, Stockton. like I picked my guys because <laughs> oh you don't like it, huh? No, go you ahead. don't like it? No, go ahead. Let's hear what your off topic is. I just got a thing to say. So the, anyway, remember I got the Jordan time. For- <laughs> Bartol Colon outran D. Gordon. Yeah, that was uh, like yesterday. Because he beat, yeah, it was incredible. That fat man is a legend. Oh, yeah. He should be in the Hall of Fame. He ran off that mound so fast. <laughs> Did you guys see that? <laughs> no, I didn't get a chance to see it. So D. Gordon hit a uh, single over to, uh, I believe it was Odor who was playing second. I don't know where the first baseman was. He might have been. Does Odor play first? He could have been. He might have been. I, the play didn't make sense in my head when I saw him pick the ball up. But anyway, <laughs> D. Gordon, arguably the fastest player in the MLB. Running out of the box. Left-handed bat, too, right? So, yeah. he has got a step. <laughs> Bartolo Colon beat him to the bat. <laughs> <laughs> it was close, but I was like, it was funny, too, because you see Gordon, as he gets close to the bag, just like shy away. From yeah. <laughs> he didn't want any part of that contact. I wouldn't either. But Colon. He would became part of Bartolo's stomach. <laughs> After he hit the bag, he must have ran all the way out to the bullpen <laughs> trying to slow himself <laughs> down. It was incredible to watch. Oh, that man's a legend. He's still very good. I love the video of him uh, hitting his first career home run. Oh, my God. <laughs> Everyone clears out of the dugout. And he's just like, <laughs> he's just shit grinning on the way in. It's just so funny. Six outs away from a perfect game. I, it's unbelievable what he can do at, at this age. And 45. I don't mean to be like, but at his size, like you, you don't think like he's going to be this effective later in his career. Like you look at Jamie. Well, and Moore. he's not a velocity pitcher either. No, like, he's just an inning eater. He used to be a velocity guy, then it just all went away. Oh, yeah, and like you can't shake him. You can <laughs> hit three home runs off him. He's still up there. Yep, he'll give up eight <laughs> runs in the first inning, win that game yep. nine to eight. <laughs> eight innings pitched, one hundred eighty pitches thrown. <laughs> Well, it's funny. I remember we were on uh, PPRN, and you had an argument with somebody about Bartolo, and he's relevant. He's very relevant. He's not going away. Uh, I'm just. I just hope he sticks around for another five years. <laughs> five years <laughs> playing into his 49 year old season. How old did Jamie Moyer play until? 49. 49. That guy was old as shit. We make him like a bullpen guy. Middle middle reliever. Uh, this is the craziest part about Moyer was he, he was <laughs> still a starter yeah. as he retired. Like that's nuts. You look at guys, they all these flamethrowers that come in the league, they throw maybe two seasons and then they're done. Look at Matt Harvey, best example I can think of right now. God, he's like, what a call, shame. You, oh, I won't pitch in the bullpen. Oh, he's pitching in the bullpen. You have to, or get out. <laughs> I don't know why the Mets haven't dealt him or just got rid of him. Like I don't save know. your time. But nobody wants him anymore. Someone will pick him up, though. He, he, he doesn't Once he have gets the, humbled by yeah. being cut, I, mean, I he think he doesn't have the value that really he would have, you know, three or four years ago, but people would take him. Change of senior might be better, beneficial for him. He's Probably. just got to get that I, ego gone. And I was telling uh, Riddler and I were talking about this two days ago. Nope. I would have. <laughs> he's denies it. Nope, didn't happen. I don't talk to him outside the show. I'd have more respect if he wasn't just running his mouth, you know, all the time and like, oh, we're putting the MLB on watch. Well, you're not. 
You're not. Well, there's like talks of him going to the bullpen, around. and he's like, I'm not a bullpen guy. I'm a starter. I get guys out in the fifth and sixth inning. And I was listening to the ESPN <laughs> radio, and the guy was like, that's like being a boxer who gets his ass kicked for 10 rounds. We're like, yeah, but I totally got him in the 12th round. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, like what's his ERA is what? Like six something? It's six on the dot. And six he, on the dot after what, four starts? Yeah. Going late into the game. He doesn't make it past six innings without struggling. Yeah, so it's it, just like, go to the bullpen. Yeah. It might work. Um I mean, it's a bad example, but Tyler Glasnow, he struggled heavily as a starter. He's young. It was his first full season for the Pirates. Uh, but we have him in the bullpen so far early. He had a seven strikeout performance coming in, pitching a couple innings. Well, the problem, too, is, is it, it can work. It, the way it is, it's not. It's in all sports today. It's not just baseball. It's Harvey is the type of guy, if he goes to the bullpen, he's going to be one of those, like, like a middle reliever, right? You know, like, can go four or five innings. You know, if there's like a, you know, if Syndergaard has a bad day, he can come in in the third and pitch till the eighth type of deal. But there's not as much money in your contract if you're a rele- middle reliever than you are if you're a starter. A bad starter is probably going to make more money than a, a decent middle reliever. I could even see him like setting up possibly closing in the future because he's got stuff, David but Robinson he can't move. think about it. What's he? What does he hit average in a five inning, six inning game? Like I think ninety. Four to five. I don't think it's that anymore. I think it's lower. Ninety-two, ninety-three. So think about if he had to focus on one inning. I think he could get back to the Harvey that was striking out the side, and I think that could either translate to a decent setup man or maybe even closer. What's a David Robinson for the White Sox? I mean, he went from being an inning eater, kind of like not eater, but multiple innings, to just coming in and save situations, and he was throwing ninety-five, ninety-six mile an hour, you know, four seamers, and you know, hitting hitting his change up to the point and. He was going out there in the ninth inning, and he was throwing 11 pitches and striking two guys out and getting a ground out to second. There's plenty of starters that have yeah. transitioned to closers. And we're talking about a guy, too, who's been hurt multiple times. I mean, maybe just physically he can't go five, six, seven innings. Maybe he does need to be on a shorter leash and become a reliever or a closer, like what Paul said. And that way there's less of a chance that he's Jeff out there. It. I'm sorry. Uh him getting hurt. Rex, actually. Oh, <laughs> Rex. Whispered it. Everyone waved over to Rex. Well, like, it attests to, like, the, it's, like, the money thing, and it's the, the, the stat thing. It's, it's the most attestable, I, what we're talking about is, so, like, for Matt Harvey, is, like, uh, as a starter, a, as a below-average starter, he's going to make more money than as a decent middle reliever, right? I mean, it's just the way that the, the game works. And this, the, you know, if he pitches six innings, and they're not that great, but he gets five strikeouts, and can manage to hold him to three runs versus coming out and pitching one inning and getting a strikeout. Like it just, like it, it, it means more to him. It's this to me. It's like relatable to like having somebody who was a shut down corner their whole life, but is now struggling and asking them to go to safety. No, it's well, exactly. it's like well, I want the I want the interceptions. I want the the you know I want the big name. I want the money. And it's like yeah, but you're not playing at that high caliber That's level a, anymore. Exactly what it is. You you take a guy. He's he came in young into New York, one of the biggest cities, onto the Mets, and he got what the nicknames, the everything, the yep. publicity, the media, he got the fame. And it's it's got to be tough. To, no one wants to come up and be like, ah, I want to be a relief pitcher. No no one really wants to be a relief pitcher. I would. I mean, but it's something everyone's – every team needs. It's an important position. You don't have the money or the fame as the starters, but it's just as crucial. I've seen more innings lost on the relievers than on the starters. And it's well, it's one of those things, too. I mean, like, he, you know, I, I think he'd benefit from just giving it a shot, you know, and if it doesn't work out. I mean, he's he, he's still probably okay enough where some team will give him a, a four or five rotation spot in the future, but maybe. On a bad team. Yeah, but but, the, but he'd probably rather be a five on a rotation on a bad team than a reliever and for the Mets. But that's I mean, a risk but, for him too. Say say he does go and and take a low level rotation spot. If he fails there, his career's over. Yeah, he's not getting picked up for anything. But like you said, I mean, there's there's been starters that have had the success, and this is the same thing we tested it to the NFL thing. You know, I mean, look at Charles Woodson. Charles Woodson was a great corner, and then when his you know his, his dominance was running out. He went and he, you know, he's like, okay, you know, I still want to play football. I still have the athleticism and stuff, but I'm just not getting it done at a corner. Let me, let me see what safety is all about. And he fucking dominated for like another decade at safety. Malcolm Jenkins too. His yeah. career was in, not in jeopardy, but he wasn't the big corner the Saints thought he'd be. Moving to safety, look at the career he's had now. Yeah. 
it, it's it, it might be you know I might be wrong, but I, I feel like when it comes to pitching versus hitting, and it's just people come up as what they are, and they like it re- changes like a, just refusal. Like it's just there's there's this and is what I am, and I can't I'm not doing anything else. That's the issue with all the publicity and fame. I and mean, it, and it's you, one of those things that the you got to should be telling you yeah. what you're doing, not you saying, "Nah, I'm a starter." No, you're. You're blessed to be in the position you're in. It's it's just it. You got to remember where you came from. You came from. You, you put on the baseball cap and picked up a glove because you loved the sport the first time you did it. It says, and Mets, then you kept playing. Not Harvey, <laughs> and Damn, you, I like Harvey. I just want him to. And fuck. well, it's just like you kept playing, and it's like at the end of the day, you're getting paid millions of dollars to do what you love, and it's like, wouldn't you kind of want to do that at any expense? Yeah. Like I mean, I'd be fine with going from five million dollars to five hundred thousand dollars to still play baseball. I'll be the best damn bullpen catcher you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really torn. I mean, I have a shirt. I don't even really like wearing it now. <laughs> I'm torn too because I have that Degrom shirt I got, and every time I wear it out, I'm like, he doesn't have his hair. Yeah, yeah. I was wearing mine uh, two days ago. Yeah, but Degrom's actually very good still. No, but he is, it's the shirt is like I can't describe it very well, but that it's pretty much his hair. So yeah, now what? He'll, he'll have it back. If... I like it when he's on the mound. He's still like trying to yeah, brush the hair. Yeah, it's always funny. <laughs> it's, it's 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 always great when you see like a player that's had that forever. Like imagine if Fitzgerald cut off his dreadlocks. I miss or John. like when Johnny Damon <laughs> cut his hair. did too. Yeah, or when Johnny Damon went to the Yankees. He I cut miss off his John Jaso. It, it was one of yeah Jaso. Like, I miss him. What is Jaso? I have no idea. <laughs> well, we'll find out. He's disappeared. <laughs> but it's like one. Of, it's I thought like, we had him for another year. <laughs> it's like those those iconic. People like I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like when they do it, you're just like, "What happened?" <laughs> Thor still has the hair, though. Yep, yep. Damon well, had to because he snaked out to the Yankees. Uh, Jason well, is currently playing for the free agency team. Oh, why isn't he in the show? He probably is. He's not. He might be like a Kyle. I go through every damn roster. <laughs> <laughs> I just found Pedro Alvarez. He sucks. Yeah, he did. I want to make like my favorite like White Sox players of all time for the show, but I don't want to spend the time doing it. But like, I, I re- did that halfway through, and then it made me like go and on the roster control thing. We'll talk about this later. It's gonna be. A- I just I want to make like I want to make <laughs> Lexi. I want to make Burley. I want to make Jermaine Die. Jermaine Die's gonna be the easiest. He's just a tall, slender black man. It's bald. <laughs> But like Burley, like you got to put like the right weight on him, and he's got the he's got the you put on a little weight at the end. Yeah, you got to put on the frou frou hair because you know he's always had kind of like the the shave sides the with nice, the like five o'clock. Yeah, oh, God, when they retired his number, he couldn't have looked like more of an under underpass drunk in my. Uh, <laughs> he was just I loved seeing him. It was great. Who were we looking for the other day? We had such a hard time finding him. Um. Oh, Derek Holland. Yeah, could oh, not find he's him. there. He's like a fifty. Yeah, they, they dropped him to like a fifty, like fifty eight overall. He's in the Which, Giants. No, he was a free agent in, in, for the, in the show. He was a free agent. He wasn't on the Giants. I watched a video of the show release. Too, he starts for the Giants. It's really hard for them to. But they put him as a fifty eight. Like I, I was like, like keep the, updating the roster because they have to. Not only does it have to pass through them, it has to pass through the the players' association and yeah. the MOB. It's like I didn't realize. How well, much the thing too is, is you, you look at it versus all the other sports. It's a lot of fucking players oh, yeah. to, to <laughs> update. It's not like in Madden where it's just like, all right. I didn't know this like, like, but for rookies, they can't be in the game besides Otani, which they went out of their way and did like special rights for until they play a game and then pass through all the. Really, that's why Copic is. They have in. to actually play a game. It's weird. That's why you download all those rosters. The, the man-made ones. The people that actually sit. That's the most amazing thing in the world to me. And they get is, the faces right. It's like, what are you doing like, with your right life? Now you can go, right now You're you can go on free. Madden 18 <laughs> and you can download this this draft class right now that's coming out. And the next year's. And the next year. Like, people, I couldn't have, like. They, what are you guys doing? They got to get paid <laughs> somehow need by somebody to do this. That's it. Thank you, though. <laughs> <laughs> Don't misunderstand. We appreciate it. Yeah. I get pissed off creating my own guy, let alone like 50 other you? people. So uh, I think, Jeff, you're the only guy who's actually done. You took the picture and sent it in, and it kind of creates. Yeah, for, you did for NBA, for NBA. Last year. And, and you do it with Sean, too. Like. <laughs> I did it one year at school the year before. I think, was it Madden, though? I don't know what, but I, I had a, a lip in. And like, <laughs> my guy was just all like to the side. Like, oh. That didn't come out that bad. Though, they're they're looking that. at it like, oh well, god, this, this guy's got a face out, tumor. This year's came out like creepily good. But it, I feel like, can you wear a hat? No, no. And my beard came out kind of weird because in the game it wasn't a beard; it was like my face, but it looked spot on. 
It was just a weird texture (laughs) issue, I guess. This guy's got a grainy face. (laughs) This guy needs to update his pixels on his face. (laughs) Kyle's players always come out very hilarious looking. Oh, yes. Nothing ever matches up to me. You're one of a kind. You're one of a kind. That's right. It's only one souls. I made myself in the show at J Mart's house like a week, a week and a half ago. Oh my God. I made him, he's got he's got a gray mullet and a gray handlebar mustache, and he's out in the desert. Out in the desert. <laughs> uh, Best place to be. As a, I don't even remember what position I played. I'm you're always the uh, catcher. You're a third baseman. Oh, that's so. right. I usually always play catcher and we're zero. Gross number. I don't remember who was on that. T- oh, Gaddis. That's the only. One. <laughs> we had a very. Uh, is that the bearded team for the most part? Yeah. yeah. Kendall and I made a team. Um, I forget. Who, oh, what team were we? We who, were. I don't remember who we were, but um, the fastest person on our team is Kevin Pillar. <laughs> yeah, they were. They could hit. They could hit well, but. They run mean, the bases. There was, like, there was like instances where like we were getting like base knocks into the outfield and guys were getting thrown out at second. <laughs> yeah, God. Like just in smoke. <laughs> Smoke, smoke, smoke. He was ripping. He was ripping gappers that would ricochet off the wall, and he'd get thrown out by a mile at second. <laughs> like trying to take smoke. It to... <laughs> uh, it's gonna be exciting MLB season, huh, Souls? Yeah, it's already getting turned off to an exciting start. It always. We uh, already have a no hitter. Yep. We've had like fifteen games that have no hitters into the seventh inning. A lot of shutouts so far. Yep. Phillies gonna sweep the Pirates today. White Sox have like half their shutouts against them. (laughs) Even if they do, uh, you're still looking up. We're looking down. Hate to break it to you. It's okay. We're playing a way better division right now. Huh? Division's better right now. Your division's better right now. You have the Marlins in your division. That's it. That's the only really bad team right now. Hold on. Hold on. Oh man, I'm laughing right now. You have the Mets. You have the Reds. The Reds. They have worse records than the Marlins. But they have great uniforms. They have great uniforms. No, they do not. The Brewers. They have a superior mascot. And the Cardinals. These are all way better teams. <laughs> the Nationals <laughs> are Mr. First Round Exits. Anyone else doesn't make the playoffs. The Mets. Uh, mm, they're Sorry. To a hot start. Though. Well, it's the forever. You know, the Washington will win the division. The rage, though, that comes out of this. I mean, well, the, but Kyle, I, what I will say is, I don't think the Braves are anything special. I, I agree that the Marlins are a disaster. It's but it's not the, a good division. It's it's two teams, and the Phillies are. I'm not dissing them. I'm saying they're essentially the Sixers. Like, they're in the process. It's way too early to tell, though. So don't get your panties in a bunch. I mean, listen, this is a this is a good Phillies team, I feel. This is a, this is a team that, you know, is much better than... They're winning 80. I think it's better than the innings. Phillies teams of the innings. past <laughs> three or four years. I mean, the middle of the road, I guess. But... We'll see. We, we will see. I do. We will see. The plus, Phillies, plus, really, realistically, we're not even supposed to be doing good. We sold our team. We still have talent. We have Corey Dickerson. It's funny that we did this. I just opened guys. up. I just Paco, opened up. Uh, Marte, Bell. I just opened up Instagram to this page I call. I follow called MLB Cut Four, and it's um. It was the Reese. Yeah, it was the the Phillies just rounding first, d- pretending to do the Philly special, the the um, Nick Foles touchdown pass or reception. In the Super Bowl, and Reese trying to catch it as he's rounding first. So, I mean, this is your guys' year if you don't win it. Because think of it this way: if the Sixers win it, you guys have to. That'd be incredible. It'd be the only time that's ever happened. Three teams have never won. In that's the, city. the best. Oh yeah, it's the. That's why I love Verlander so much. You guys see the thing with him in the coming out of the uh, the dugout. No. There was a uh, yeah. a kid heckling him from the stands behind woman. the dugout, <laughs> saying Verlander, you suck. So he came out of the dugout with a handwritten sign on like printer paper saying, "No, you suck." <laughs> <laughs> he was bitching about Tim Anderson like so bad. He's oh god. He's like, oh, you know, he stole a base while they were down five nothing. It's a blowout. What are you doing? That's not good baseball. <laughs> yeah, he stole a base. You're trying to get back in the game, guys. Relax. <laughs> so you get, he does this all the time, If you're too. up 10 nothing, then stealing a yeah, base is... Like, relax, Justin. <laughs> he picked him off, too, and he's like, yeah, I got him anyway. <laughs> all right, good for you. You already you know, have Kate Upton in a World Series and a Cy Young. What else do you want? Yo, who can you complain about? Yeah. <laughs> Andy has a no-hitter. I That's guess funny. until he gets that perfect game, he's going to bitch and moan. You know, <laughs> Danny Farquhar? Who? Oh, uh, well, no. He We're had a brain together. hemorrhage in the freak. They said he had a brain hemorrhage. Oh, yeah, in the dugout. Really? Yeah. And oh, my God. They said he's stable now. Yeah. yeah. No, I did hear that. 
So that's, that's scary. Imagine that being like his teammates. Yeah, there's something wrong with this guy. Yeah, God, I didn't, I didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah, can we get the doctor over here? <laughs> it's kind of a medic. <laughs> Farquhar. Yeah, you know yeah, he's the he's cousin like. of the uh, the bad guy from Shrek. From Shrek. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Lord that small, short, little shrimp <laughs> dick motherfucker. <laughs> that, that, that aggressed really fast. <laughs> guy was a villain. <laughs> um, so I don't know. Are, are you guys? Do you think that so far? Do you think uh, the Pels are the uh, the upset kings? No. I mean, the Blazers haven't really won anything in the playoffs ever. But now they're saying Terry Stotts could be fired. But to sweep, oh, I think we, it's unexpected. No one, I don't think anyone would predict they would have swept. Come on, no, not have swept. I think people predicted they would win this series. Did you? I did not personally. So exactly. but a lot of people <laughs> so, probably like it just because I didn't think it was. But it's not an upset by any means. <laughs> because, like, the, the Pelicans have a good team: Anthony Davis, Drew Holiday. Rajon Rondo steps his game up in the playoffs. It was so funny. Who was was it? Was it McCollum that was like? How, he, like he said at the press conference, he's like, "I don't know how you expect us to win when Rondo's making threes. <laughs> True, <laughs> and it's Rahone Rondo. So it's Rahone, everybody knows <laughs> Rahone that. Rahone Rondo. You're so lucky we don't have the privacy. I am there. very lucky. Yeah, <laughs> don't worry. You can do it when you get back to the house. I know. We'll just throw a nipple on it. We can finish it. <laughs> um, do you think? Uh, do you think Lebron pulls out the first round? Yes. I don't know. No, he will. They're what, what down two one. Two one. It's just like his supporting cast is not as good as you as years in the past. I think it completely comes to game five, regardless of what happens in game four. If if the Pacers win, then they're obviously up three one. If the Cavs win, I think if the Pacers can beat the Cavaliers at home in game five, I think they win the series. I worry for him if they do, only because we're talking about a guy. That is old, and he just came off of a full, complete 82-game season, and he's being tested early. Usually, he walks to the, the yeah. finals, right? So, this year, he's – I mean, that could work, though. He's a competitive guy. He feeds off the competitiveness. So, eh, it's going to be interesting. But it was, it was cause, like, the Pacers beat the Cavs three times in the regular season. Yeah. So, they had their number. And the, the winner Pacers of this one plays – are not to be slept on. They're very, And the winner very, of this play is the winner of Toronto, Washington, right? Yeah. Which is going to be – Either way, is going to be a very fast-paced physical game. Like, realistically, if Toronto... I mean, if Washington can somehow beat Toronto, they can go to the Eastern Conference Finals. I can see them beating, you know, Indiana or Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the Celtics-Bucks series is still not over with. I mean, Celtics have 2-1, Can but... we talk about Terry Roger for, like, a split second? Who? Terry Roger. According to Eric Butso. Who the hell is that? Dude, he's nasty. I know who he is. He's Eric nasty know who in the was. playoffs. <laughs> no, I know that. But see, he hasn't turned the ball. Ah. This Moving playoffs on. for me has been. A, I, I've really liked this NBA playoffs, even if it ends up being Golden State Cleveland. I like this NBA final so far because it's the first time in a long time we've seen carryover from a very dominant rookie, like oriented year mm. into the playoffs. I mean, Mitchell's playing out of his mind in the playoffs. Tatum's playing out of his mind in the playoffs. Simmons is playing out of his mind in the playoffs. Like we're seeing these rookies, you know, that they did their their thing all year long and then they came into the playoffs and they're they're still doing it. Like Brett Brown did not sit Ben Simmons. Like Markel Fulton didn't even see the court last game. I'm sure he saw it. No, he didn't. He didn't play one minute. <laughs> well, his eyes but were I, open. I think he saw the court. You know what I mean, guys. <laughs> Well, I mean, you could have just said, like, he didn't step foot on the court, which also probably would have been, like, non-factual. Yeah, yeah. When there's timeouts, all the players are on the court. So it's like, God, you just got to pick and choose your words. Like, you know, he didn't touch the ball in play would have been a proper way to say it. All right. Sorry. He didn't log a minute. All right. Um, He is just another first-round, like, ass draft by the Sixers that's going to turn out to be really good in seven years. Next year, maybe. Mm. It's blo- mind-blowing to me is this is not Bede's third season. Yeah. <laughs> And he's played more, like and his, Simmons second. He's played so the I, we won't do that. He's played the same amount of games in the playoffs that he played in his first two years, pretty much. <laughs> Man, he sucks with the mask. He cannot catch the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you like when he he uh, with the mask got his head still got the block? Yeah, well, it's just like I just I hated that he wore the Phantom of the Opera mask to ring the bell for the first game. It was like, oh my god, go away! <laughs> Come on, Joel. Like he's trying to catch the ball and he just can't do it. It's like you can't see or whatever. Well, yeah. it's it's weird. I mean, I get it has to be, you know, protective, but it's, like, designed so bulky. 
Yeah. But like the wrong hit can like. Well, my thing too is like I don't. What I don't understand is like why are players like LeBron did it, Embiid's doing it, other players have done it. Why the black mask? Like why not the clear one? If I recall, the yeah. most dominant clear mask player of all time was Rip Hamilton, yes. and he killed it with the mask. Yes, well, they said like this mask is more. It's tougher than the plastic. That's all they said. <laughs> Kevlar. Here's the deal. Carbon Mask fiber. or not, if I elbow and bead in the eye socket right now, it's going to hurt. End of story. There's so many tools on, uh, like laying out. <laughs> All right. Well, let's round those to our beer reviews. Uh, Mock texted me. He said the Sea Hag sucked. <laughs> he said that he would never drink it again. Zero out of ten would recommend. Um, so that's his take on it. I guess he's just not an IPA guy. More of a, I think he's more of like a Coors Light kind of guy, but. It is what it is. You got to try new things. So uh, the bush is always good. The bush is always good. Bush. Bush. I love the abrupt ending. Uh, bush. Red Baron, Mir, uh, how was your girly drink? It's very good. I did the Ice Man. I believe it's thirteen percent. I believe. Uh, <laughs> not a uh, drink. A fifth of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll finish it. A huge cider drinker, but I do. No, I meant a fifth as in like the measurement of 750 is a fifth. Uh, Not a fifth as in you drink one fifth of the bottle. You dingus. (laughs) 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 That got me. That was funny. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, Cider drinkers kind of. I I have no ability to to articulate flavor or describe anything. So (laughs) everything just tastes like water. Substance. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. If you like cider, just go get it. It's like thirteen bucks. It's good. You know if you like cider. If you don't, you don't. You do. You do. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a very acquired taste. Like you don't. No one's it ever sucks. Like, oh, this cider's okay. Like it's just like I drink it. I'm like, so would you like to try it? Would I would. I would you honestly would like rather. No. no, you would. If I had the choice, <laughs> you would. If I had the you? choice between getting a free six pack of a really good hard cider and purchasing my own apple juice, I would buy apple juice. <laughs> I'd rather just have apple juice. What kind of apple juice? Uh, I'm a big uh, I'm a big Mott's guy. Yeah, like the Mott's Ooh, apple juice, like the FH Mott. Mm-hmm. Shout I'm also, out to Hamden. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I also like uh, the, the, the juicy juice is good, and um, Minute Maid. I only like the Minute Maid and like the little bottles you get from the gas station. <laughs> Minute Maid, <laughs> they have it. <laughs> I, I know it is. Oh, uh, I had the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Um, I mean it was good. It was just refreshing. I mean not a whole lot of flavor, just crisp and refreshing, low percent, easy drinking beer. Mm. You know after drinking. Dos Equis in Cancun, it was nice to come home to a Narragansett. That's a, <laughs> that's a real New England man that's right what there. I gotta say. He's gonna go take a bath in some clam chowder after this. <laughs> oh, gross. Uh, Manhattan clam chowder. Ooh, that way you can be with the lady and you'll never know. <laughs> that was gross. Yeah. That was real gross. Yeah. Um, social media? You can find us at our. GSR. Uh, <laughs> Facebook is Getting Sports with Drunk. Twitter, GSWD underscore four. Instagram, same name, Getting Sports with Drunk. Uh, you can listen to us on Leib Sports Network every day from 7 to 8 a.m. and live here on the PPRN Radio Network, Sundays 11 to 1. You know, Mark always pauses so I can do my hashtag GSWD. I'm thing. so sorry. So I totally. This is it. the second week in the row the fans don't get to hear what I have to hashtag. Well, can we do it again? No, no, it's lost. That's no. It's, we can do it over. That'd be like the Blazers being like, hey, can we redo this last the shot Phillies so we don't give it to McConnell to do the shot? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I don't know what we're going to talk about next week. Probably some draft. Uh, spend the first hour, do some draft draft recap. See how terrible our uh, our draft. Probably terrible. Yeah, probably. I can already see us getting like three right. That's it. I believe I work. <laughs> so go uh, let me know how shitty I did. <laughs> no, we will. We will. We will. Jump. I, we still got to jump. 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 Uh, we got to put up our... Draft still? Are we, are we posting that? I don't know. I don't know. We always kind of embarrassing. Stuff. Well, I'd rather just tell people that we didn't do a good job <laughs> <laughs> instead of putting it there like, oh, let's see, like, blah, blah, blah. oh my god, look how terrible that is. <laughs> Let me screenshot this and send it to all my friends. <laughs> um, they suck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so until next time, I'm your hostess, Cupcake the Riddler. Uh, oh, I forgot. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm everyone's favorite reverend, Brother Souls. <laughs> Everybody's favorite uh, reverend. I like it. I'm J. Martin. <laughs> and I'm the Red Baron. Yeah. Yeah.